Yeah, I'm just making a quick recording to walk you through some of the things that I found in Tabletop Simulator to be super handy with regard to the Wing Leader uh, complete module that you can find in the Steam Workshop. Now, this is a really great implementation. I love so many of the details that were put into this, like the personalized hangars that store all of the planes. So of course, if you want to find a Spitfire, you can come over here and hit search, and then just come in and look at all of the different Spitfire models and makes and stuff like that and grab what you need for a scenario. So it makes getting into a scenario nice and easy, um, and that's really nice. They also <clears throat> included all of the relevant charts that you need. Basically, the only thing you're going to need to bring with you to the computer will be your aircraft description card, so those ADCs. Now, as you can see as I zoom around here, this is a pretty big table. And even if I zoom out, you can see it's a pretty big setup, and there's a lot of space between many of the different locations on the table. Tabletop Simulator has some great tools that help you deal with that um, called ham camera hotkeys. So I've set up camera hotkeys. My one uh, camera preset looks just at kind of the area that's necessary for this particular scenario. You can customize that. So let's say I really wanted to zoom in maybe to just like here. I can change that. And now if I zoom out and move around and just hit shift one, Boom, I'm back to that new view. So you can even modify this in gameplay to make your life easier to hop around. Because, as you know in this game, not everything is stored on the board. And that means that you are going to end up in a position where you have to go and look around a little bit. And so we need to go see the... Let's take a look. In this case, it's the tiger-tiger scenario. So we're talking about the flying tigers in China at the beginning of the war. Let's go take a look at their status sheet. And that... I've bound to my second camera view. Super quick. Let's take a look at the Japanese. Boom. Really quick. I also have uh, all of the administrative counters on a fourth view. Fifth camera view shows sequence of play and kind of the flak bombing chart. And the sixth camera view shows the actual combat and loss tables. And then seven goes back to um, kind of the game administrative uh, squadron counters. So it's a really easy way to hop around and um, set your views up however you want to. The other thing I'd recommend here is at the top you can set your rotation. Uh, so by default when you hover and hit rotate it will move by those degrees for you when you just do a rotate. So you can actually set this to be you know, 45, right? So if I hold it down it's going to move quicker but it also makes sure that I get back to whatever I want to right off the bat. So again, I like to keep this at 30. I think the default is um, 15. If you have games where you have lots of counters and stacks, let me just stack some of these up. Um, it can be hard to see what's going on under here. One, I would say tilt your camera view a little bit. It makes it easier. Um, but also you can change your how high you lift. So I'm going to change this up a little bit. And now, look, that makes it easier for me to see. I can even pull it up a little bit more, I think, here. And now it's really easy to see. If I want to see what's under this one, I can just right-click. And notice that it's really easy for me, then, to take care of these. So I can very quickly see what's in a stack. And if I need to move what's on top underneath it, I just hit U. And now, look, those are... Let's go back and look. See, we've, see, we've moved those back under the stack. And so... Super handy little tip there that took me a little while to figure out, but has made my life that much easier. The only thing I would say is that there are lots of different ways to roll the dice. So you can actually take it and roll it, right? You can kind of move it back and forth to get a more of a randomization and roll it. Um, however, what I would say is there's another way to do it by pressing R, and I don't really like it because you know what the ant, you know what the roll result is going to be <laughs> before it lands. So if, you have, if you're playing against somebody who's being kind of tricky, they can sit here and do that so like they know where this is going to fall. That's going to be a four, for example, or this one is going to be a, another four. Let's do it again here and see if we can get something cool. All right. That's going to be a six. Back to a six. Oh, that was a four. All right. 
there we go. But you can see on the tool tip, it kind of shows up. The nice thing in this is that they've added a roller and you can see down in the lower left corner what the roll is. So this just randomizes the rolls. And it, it does a pretty good job of it. It's super handy. Um, they also put in these nice little calculators if you want to track um, any of the uh, modifiers. They have them right here on the combat sheet. Super handy again. Um, I would have maybe have liked to seen one over here as well, but it's not a problem really. Um, you can you can also I think move these. There's I think there's a way to move these. Um, I think you could maybe clone this. Yeah, so you could basically clone it, bring it over here, plop it down, hit escape. Let's get rid of this one. Let's delete that one. There we go. So you can move these if you want to get if you want to have them moved around, and then you can hit C to clear them out. Um, but again, pretty easy to deal with. I like it has an in-game clock that shows your local time, um, so that's just queued off of your um, actual uh, system clock on your computer. Um, really handy. Um, one thing that I've done is these show m the most common counters, and one of the things is these are locked at the beginning of the game, which makes sense because they're trying to show you what's in each of these bags, right? Because you can always right click on a bag, hit search, and then you can pull what you need to out of here, right? Not a problem. I kind of like cloning these things. Um, and so you can actually just hit, um, like, let's say, for example, um, you know, I need to deal with a uh, climb marker, right? If I hit control C and then come over here, and hit control V, it's going to drop that climb marker down for me um, wherever I happen to need it, right? So we'll get these back to where they need to be. I will say, you know, if you look and see, um, if you have that lift height really high, the one thing I will say, you probably don't want to leave it there. Um, it's always good to have it back lower because as you can see, it makes it a little bit easier um, when you're not chucking things halfway across the screen. See, that doesn't go quite as far. And so if you're moving a counter around, any momentum you have with it is going to be translated into um, forward motion because of the way the physics engine works. So you can kind of screw things up with that. If you mess around too much, it'll knock pieces over. But for the most part, pretty easy. I've liked it. I like the implementation here better than I like the implementation in Vassal. That's not the case in every single module. Um, for example, I really like the implementation, for example, of Empire of the Sun that is in Vassal since it shows you all of the relative ranges and control and all that kind of stuff very handy. Um, it makes that game really, truly much easier to play. Um, this game, on the other hand, I think because it's such a minimal on game setup, what you really want is true fidelity with actually playing the game and getting everything kind of out of the way. And by going through and setting up your camera quick keys, hopefully you will find that this is an easy module for you to use in Tabletop Simulator.